Good evening. Chief Barnett uh, wanted me to do a quick training on the new foregast monitor. This will uh, be replacing the one on engine 72 and engine 72's old MSA will go to engine 74. The new foregast monitor is the industrial scientific Ventus. It's a foregast monitor with an integrated pump. It's fairly simple operations. The nice thing about it, like I said, is the integrated pump. As soon as you turn the unit on, the pump comes on, there's no wand attachments, there's no extra batteries or anything like that. It's a fairly simple operation. As you see right here, we only have two buttons. The only one you guys need to be concerned with is the button on the left. That's the on-off button. So we'll hold that down. The unit will start to make noise. There it goes. You'll see it comes on, gives an audible and a visual alarm, plus a vibration. You'll see the little clock flashing in the top middle of the screen. That means it's going through its warm-up. There's nothing really on this you guys need to be concerned with. It's just its normal warm-up phase. It'll go through its gas. You hear the pump running. It'll give a 20-second countdown. After that 20-second countdown, the unit should be ready to use. Once it comes up, it's ready to go. You've got your four gases, your CO, your H2S, your LEL, and your O2. We use it just like we did our original MSAs. Like I said, the only difference is with the integrated pump, we don't have to attach anything to it. We're ready to go at this point. If at any chance you need to do a zero, you hit the left button until you get the check mark in the zero, and then the right button for enter. Again, you'll see the flashing clock. That's telling you it's doing its zero, and it's a simple pass or fail at that point. You get the check mark in the zero. To exit out of the zero screen, you just hit the right button again, and it takes you back to your normal read mode. At that point, you're ready to make entry into the residence. Whether it's for a CO call or an odor call, we're just going at that point and check. As in the past, as usual, make sure you just keep an eye on the O2. 20.9 is ambient air. Anything that drops below 19.5 requires an SCBA before we make entry into the, to the residence. Any type of audible alarm as far as the H2S, LL, or CO, obviously that requires you guys to go out and get SCBAs and get them on before we make any second re-entry into the residence at that time. To turn the unit off, again, it's the same button on the left. You hold it down. You'll see a five-second countdown with audible and visual alarms. And the unit shuts off. It's pretty simple, basically firefighter proof. We just turn it on, turn it off, and zero it. Again, if you guys have any questions on this, just let me know. It will be here at 72's on engine 72, and the MSAs will go to engine 74. That way all frontline engines have some sort of four gas monitoring on them. Also, Chief Barnett has been so kind as to purchase some personal monitors. This one here is an HCN personal monitor, and then we also have a CO personal monitor. I'm going to cover these real quick. These are real basic, simple operations. The HCN has four buttons across it. It's got an on, an up and down, and a select. Again, the only one you guys need to be worried with is the on button. You hold it down. Again, a visual and an audible alarm as well as a vibrate. Talks about the year, the month, the date. It'll even give you the day. Gives you the time. Tells you it's an HCN personal monitor. The alarm set at 4.7. The high is 10.0. The low is 4.7. That is our uh, audible alarm for us to be in SCBAs at that point. Anything above 4.7 requires an SCBA. Anything below that, per the SOP, says that we are able to go without SCBAs for a time-weighted average of eight hours while working in that environment. You see as it comes up, it says zero, zero parts per million. That means we're not picking up any CO at this point. I will let you guys know that these will be required to do a weekly bump test. I will be the one performing the bump test. I will also show Lieutenant Myers how to perform the bump test. We are the only two 
other than maybe Chief Barnett if he wants to learn to do the bump test. If there's a problem with it, as it has been in the past, just contact one of us and we'll take care of that. You guys don't need to be worried about any of the other buttons other than turning it on and holding the button down and turning it off. It'll tell you it's turning off. That's done. The CO, we're not going to show you how to turn this on yet. This is a, a little bit of a different unit. I know it looks the same. This is the on button right here. The only difference is, is once this is turned on, it stays on for two years. It's a two-year monitor. It comes on. It stays on. All right, so we don't want to be walking around any exhaust pipes with this and getting it to set off or anything like that. It's going to be kept in the cab with the other two units, and I'll talk a little bit about what they're going to be used for after we go through this. Again, once it's turned on, that's it. You don't ever turn it back off. It's good to go. These two units combined together will be hooked on a lanyard. That lanyard will be kept with the four gas unit. Sorry, I had a small technical malfunction there. As I was saying, both these units will be attached to a lanyard. They will both go in during the overhaul after an active fire operation. They are not to be brought in during the fire, only after the fire during overhaul. They will be hung somewhere in the room that we're overhauling or the residence that we're overhauling. And as long as they stay with below the readings that they're supposed to stay below, we can go without our SCBAs. The minute they either one of these two units alarm, that gives us the indication that we need to go back into our SCBAs because there is some type of toxic gas in the atmosphere, whether it's CO or HCN. Obviously, they both have audible and visual alarms. I've already talked about the low alarm on the HCN, which is 4.7. The high alarm on the uh, CO is set at, or excuse me, the low alarm on the CO is set at 35. That's the time-weighted allowance that OSHA says that we can work in 35 parts per million of CO for a course of eight hours. The high alarm is 50 parts per million, and of course the IDLH of CO is 1,500. If we get any type of alarm, that requires us to put back on our SCBAs until these alarms clear out and it, these monitors have determined it's safe for us to operate without our SCBAs. If you guys have any questions about either one of the units or the new foregas, feel free to reach out to myself. Lieutenant Myers will be trained when he returns back, and Chief Barnett will probably be able to answer some questions for you. If not, he'll forward them on to me. Thanks.